All right, today we're going to be going over cellular junctions and things that are outside of the cell. Um, you guys should have gone over what's inside the cell when you're going through chapter four, going over organelles and how things work on the inside. Now let's talk a little bit about how cells connect to each other and how they, the space in between those two different cells. Oh, when I say extracellular material, I'm just talking about stuff outside the cell. And one structure that is a part of some cells that is an extra cell, considered an extracellular material is something called a cell wall. It's considered extracellular because it's outside the plasma membrane. Um, cell walls are made of cellulose, which hopefully you see the OSE at the end of that, and you should know right away that that is a carbohydrate. And cell walls provide three big functions for specific cells. Um, not every cell has a cell wall. Plant, all plant cells have a cell wall, all fungi have a cell wall, and some prokaryotes have a cell wall. The reason those things have cell walls is that Unlike animals, they don't have a bony skeleton to keep shape. So the cell wall is going to provide some rigid support on the outside of the actual plant cell. And inside the plant cell, hopefully you remember, there is a storage unit called a vacuole. In a plant cell, when the vacuole fills with water, that puts pressure on that cell wall, and that creates something called turgor pressure, which we'll talk about in Chapter 5 a little bit more as we talk about things on the membrane and outside the membrane. Cell walls protect plants from infection. Well, um, in a plant cell, it definitely encapsulates each cell. So if one cell gets sick, that sickness doesn't always just jump from cell to cell to cell inside a plant. It can be sort of contained or quarantined. And sort of going along with the trigger pressure, it can control cell expansion. Now, just because I said it does protect one cell from a potential infection inside another cell, it doesn't mean that they're completely separate. Um, things, little structures called plasmodesmata are connections between the cells that allow plant cells to talk to one another. So plant cells do communicate with one another, but they are very separated also. And we already told you where the cell walls are found in plants, some bacteria, and all fungi. Now, when we're talking about plant cells and animal cells, so kind of all the multicellular organisms, the space between the cells is what we call the matrix, the extracellular matrix. And inside the matrix are a lot of things, are these fibers called collagen. Now, in me, because I'm a little bit older, my collagen fibers are starting to degrade. And when that happens, I start to get wrinkles. You guys are nice and young, so your skin's all tight on your face still. When I smile, it looks like an old catcher's mitt, which, yeah, that's not a good thing. Um, the matrix, though, allows cells to be held together really tightly. And while they're held together really tightly, stick your finger on, put your thumb on the back of your hand, and wiggle it around on your other side. Now, you're made up of cells, and if those cells weren't allowed to slide and glide a little bit on each other, that would be a bad thing. You'd just rip your skin right off. So while it's holding the cells together, it's also giving them a little bit of physical movement, allowing them to rub around on each other a little bit and allows it a little bit of give, which is an important thing because things expand and contract inside our bodies. So we have to have that um, you don't wouldn't want your skin to just rip off. It has to stay stuck together, but it has to have a little bit of give too. Same thing all over the inside of your body. Now, anytime two cells come together, there we call that a junction. A junction is just where two or more things come together. And that picture on the left is a jumbled mess of highways coming together, but sort of similar things happen inside your body where you have a bunch of different cells coming together at a specific point. Um, these are your three types of junctions. We'll go into each one individually. A tight junction is exactly that. You can see right here we have one cell on the right, one cell on the left. There's a lot of little proteins that are holding these cells together kind of tightly, almost like they're sewn together in these little areas. Well, tight junctions are going to hold cells together pretty tightly. Um, an example of where that might happen is in the urinary bladder. The last thing you'd ever want is urine leaking out of your bladder. So it's kind of good that those cells have tight junctions and they're held together really solidly so that things don't leak out. Now, those cells do expand and, expand and recoil and that's okay, but they don't allow a lot of space and a lot of room for movement in between the cells so that things can't leak out. A desmosome 
we find those a lot in the skin. They link the cells together pretty well, but they do allow for a little bit of space and a little bit of movement in the extracellular material. They allow things to pass from cell to cell. Um, so again, how I told you, put your thumb on the back of your hand and wiggle around and you can see that the stuff gives a little bit. That's because you have these things that kind of look like buttons that are proteins going from one cell to another cell and they sort of hold those together. The last cell junction we'll talk about today is what we call a gap junction. And a gap junction is kind of like if you have a room with you and someone else in your family and there's a doorway that goes directly from your room to their room. That's sort of what happens in a gap junction is that we have these little proteins that are embedded that hold the two cells together but also act as a passageway. So if I want to get material from cell A to cell B, it doesn't even have to actually leave the cell. It just goes right through the tunnel and goes from cell A to cell B. So it's a really quick way to get things back and forth. And in cardiac cells, which are all found in your heart, that's a really big thing because that electric current that makes your heart beat has to transport really quickly. So these um, gap junctions really help speed that up. That's about all we have for today for the junctions and the things in between the cells. Uh, as we move into chapter five, we're gonna start going on to uh, the plasma membrane and how the membrane works, getting things in and out of your cells. Um, hope you had fun listening to this. I'll talk to you soon.